Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the match between Granada and FC Barcelona. This will be a match that is going to be played for the Copa del Rey quarterfinals. So here's the thing, right? Barcelona are on the right path. We have been doing extremely well within the past two or three matches. We have gotten a 2-1 win against Athletic Club and another 2-1 win against Rayo Vallecano. And within those games, we showed fluidity within our work. We have been showing our defensive attributes from Dembele defending his spaces to Samuel Umtiti regaining his form to Antoine Griezmann doing very well in defensive recoveries. It really shows that this is a team that knows how to attack and knows how to defend. And I do believe that now we are in that phase where we are starting to see Kumit's ideas and what he has always wanted to implement within this team. Because a couple of months ago, we were asking, okay, where's the young going to play? Is he going to play as a pivot or as a interior? Where's Dembele going to play? Is he going to be playing as a right winger or a left winger? Where's Griezmann going to be playing we sometimes see him play as a right winger as a left winger sometimes as a striker what about our formation we have seen a 4-2-3-1 a 3-5-2 a 4-3-3 but now we are starting to see some consistency within this team we are finally starting to see the specific roles of some players and we are finally starting to stick to one formation and seeing how this team is finally molding and actually building towards something i do believe that with this tournament which is the copa del rey this is going to be our biggest chance to win a trophy is it one of the biggest trophies in this season it's not but it is one of the biggest chances for us to finally gain some silverware after being trophyless for a total of 18 months and looking at these two teams between Granada and FC Barcelona I do want to point out some stats between these two teams with Barcelona right now they're averaging a total of 2.1 goals per game within La Liga now I know that this is for a Copa del Rey match and not for La Liga but I am going to be bringing some samples from the league season to understand where the level is for Granada and FC Barcelona. So Barcelona do average about 2.1 goals per game. And then looking at Granada, I want to point out the amount of goals they concede per 90 minutes. And as of now, within the league season, Granada is actually the worst team in La Liga that does concede goals every 90 minutes with a total of 1.6 goals every match. And if you were to look at Barcelona's high scoring form and Granada's horrible way of defending, the quality between these two teams are very, very different. And we did see that already earlier this year after Barcelona has already beaten Granada 4-0 at their home. And I do believe that Barcelona themselves know that they can repeat the exact same success going up against Granada in this quarterfinal match. Now, I do want to talk about some player fitness updates because right now, as we head towards February, Barcelona and us fans, we are really awaiting for some of the arrivals of some of these players. And the players that are currently sitting out on the sidelines are very eager to come back. So here is going to be the squad list that is going to be facing Granada. We can see that Serginho Dest has received the green light. He is no longer injured. He does seem to be okay. He will be participating in this match against Granada. I do not expect Serginho Dest to play a full 90 minutes. I do expect him to get the exact same treatment like how Kuman treated Sergio Roberto in the previous match. We could see Serginho Dest maybe for about 20 minutes and no more than that. I do expect in the next match for Serginho Dest to play the full 90 minutes depending on how this game specifically does go for him. And then I want to move on to Gerard Piquet. He is not in the squad list but there is some major updates regarding his fitness and it says here he gets recovery is going very good he wants to be fit in two weeks for the game against PSG though he has been advised to be cautious and have an aim to return during the end of February as it was initially planned but as we look at these pictures here we can see that Gerard Piquet actually featured on the training ground he was not with the players but he was on the training ground working on his fitness and to be very honest that is a very early surprise because we did not expect to see Gerard Piquet until at least the beginning of March March. And so you can truly see the type of commitment Gerard Piquet has been going through for the past two or three months. He is recovering very fast and he does want to be available as soon as possible for this Barcelona club. And if everything does go well, then yes, it's true that Gerard Piquet could feature in that match going up against PSG. And we must also keep in mind that the only reason why Gerard Piquet does seem like he is going to be returning very early, it is because he did have two choices when his injury did a cure. He was either going to have the surgery and stay out for longer or not have the surgery and come back much, much earlier. Looking at this, Gerard Piquet did not take the surgery and he wants to come back much, much earlier. I do assume that the only reason why he did pick that choice is because he knows that he does not have a lot of time in his career to continue to play. If you were a young player like Ansu Fati or Dembele and you needed surgery and you knew that if you do not take it, it was going to affect you later in the career, then yes, the surgery had to be mandatory. But because Gerard Piquet has just turned 34 years old, I do believe that it was his decision to say that I do not need it because I do not have that much time playing 
playing for this Barcelona team. And so I do believe that Gerard Piquet is going to be having a role with Ronald Koeman's Barcelona. I do believe that he is going to be serving as a leader for this club. I do believe that he's also going to be that speaker for the defensive line before the matches, during the matches, and after the matches. Gerard Piquet still has a massive role to play within this team. It doesn't necessarily have to be him playing on the pitch. And yes, I do sometimes do want to see Gerard Piquet being paired with Ronald Araujo, two players who truly do understand each other, but are also two very different types of center backs. One is very good on the ball, Gerard Piquet, and one is very good when it does come to 1v1s, pressuring the opposition, and that is Ronald Araujo. It is a great chemistry to have within that center back duo. And then we also had Ronald Koeman speak on Gerard Piquet and Astu Fati in the pre-match press conference, and he said this, the most important thing is to recover well. Putting a date isn't good. Hopefully they can be ready for the game against PSG, but I don't have the security. They're on the road to recovery, so we will see. And so it is clear that Ronald Koeman does highly demand the return of Ansu Fati and Gerard Piquet, but one of the questions that I do want to ask you guys is going to be this. Do you guys believe that the return of Ansu Fati and Gerard Piquet is going to improve Barcelona's performance on the pitch? Because this was a question that I was actually sitting on because if we were to analyze this team and looking at the positions on where Ansu and Gerard Piquet do play, you can see that right now, Antoine Griezmann is playing as a left winger and he has been playing absolutely amazing. Not in the way that we wanted, but he has still been very, very productive when it does come to providing goals and assist in these right moments. And then you have to question, could Ansu Fati compete with those numbers? And then moving on to Gerard Piquet, we have seen Samuel Lumtiti finally come back from injury and he has been playing absolutely amazing. One of the strengths of Gerard Piquet it has been on the ball performances and Samuel Lumtiti does extremely well at that and we did see that against Athletic Club. So it's a question to really consider. I personally do think that it is going to greatly improve Barcelona's performance on the pitch but what I do believe Ansu Fati could bring would be the pace that was so needed by Barcelona on that left wing area. This is something that Antoine Griezmann cannot bring. I do believe that with Ansu Fati, yes he is going to be on par with Antoine Griezmann when it comes to the assist and goals but with his ability to bring the pace and to drag players away from the other side of the pitch is going to be very very important important for Barcelona. So yes, I do believe that these two players are going to be improving Barcelona, but not in the way that many people are going to be thinking. Again, it's not going to be based off the assist and the goals. It's going to be based off what they could bring with the added quality that they do have on top of that. But now I want to move on to the next topic, and that is going to be about Ronald Koeman speaking about FC Barcelona and Lionel Messi. Koeman has been speaking a lot recently on interviews and pre-match press conferences, and he has been saying a lot of interesting things. And I do want to point out two different statements coming from Ronald Koeman regarding Barcelona and Lionel Messi because when I was looking at these statements it really made me wonder on what Koeman is trying to do within this season and I'm going to be reading you guys exactly what I do mean and what he has been saying in the past week. So the first statement is going to be about Lionel Messi and he said this I'm not confident that Messi is going to be staying in Barcelona but I'm hopeful yes about this because he's still a great player. He's still winning matches for us for the team. I'm enjoying being his coach. If you look at his qualities every day in the training sessions, he is absolutely incredible. Of course, he came as a young kid to Barcelona, and I still don't see Messi wearing another shirt other than a Barcelona shirt. Then I want to move on to the statement of Ronald Koeman speaking about Barcelona, and he said this, this is a season in which we are changing things. Barcelona today is not about to win many things. We have to be realistic. Where we came from, the changes we have made, and the young players we play with. And so looking at these two statements, right, you can get a sense and ask, why is Ronald Koeman not defending Barcelona or Lionel Messi? Why is he saying that he is not confident on having Messi stay within this club? And why is he saying that this club is not capable to win titles yet? And so I do believe that Koeman does want to do two things. One is going to be that he does not want to put pressure on any of these players and demand that we have to win titles in this season. And, it, and this is something that many coaches do like to do. It's nothing too surprising. But what I do find very surprising is this. Ronald Koeman has been doing something very similar to what we're Guardiola has been doing with Manchester City. Guardiola through this season has stated multiple times with his team that they are not title contenders and that a team like Tottenham are more capable to win the title in this season. And he has also recently just stated a couple of days ago and I quote, I don't think the players are more optimistic or more angry or upset because the people consider us this season as not contenders for the title. Now what is this telling us? I do believe that Ronald Koeman wants the people and the fans and the players to know that do not be fooled of the wins that we are delivering 
screen in this season. Do not think that because we have won these games, we are going to be automatic Champions League or La Liga contenders. The main goal that I do want to bring within this team is to develop many players as much as possible. This is something that Johan Cruyff was very keen on back in his days. It was all about developing players. It was not about winning these games or winning all of these titles. Their main focus was to develop players and then to see if they could win titles because obviously when you do develop players in the right way, it does lead towards medals. And looking at the previous three to four years within Barcelona, Barcelona did not have that. Barcelona had no idea what development was. They did not develop not a single player within those past three to four years. And look at what happened. Look at the results that showed for Barcelona in the past three to four years. But in this season under Ronald Koeman, the only thing we have been seeing was development. If there was one thing that we have seen more than winning within this season, it was about developing these players from Pedri to Ansu Fati to Dembele playing much more better to Frankie De Jong refining his role to Ronald Araujo becoming one of the best center backs not only in Barcelona but in the world. And then you also look at Serginho Dest who does want to make a name for himself in that right back position. You can see that there is a new era within this team alongside Ricky Puj, Minguesa and other players like Moriba who is coming into the first team training session. That is Ronald Koeman's main focus and I do believe that that is why Koeman has been saying we are not title contenders in this season. And again why? It is because he is focused on developing these players in the team because once you do develop it does end up bringing results later down the road and I do believe that that is a very smart move because Ronald Koeman is controlling on what he could do developing players then trying to control on what he cannot control which is to win every title in this season because again I'm going to bring it back if you just focus on just winning titles in this season and you put yourself in a position where I have to win the Champions League this year I have to win La Liga this year you're going to be falling short and that has been proven over the past three to four years so I do give my props towards Ronald Koeman for positioning this team in this way and making us feel like we do have something for ourselves in the near future but now I want to go into the starting 11 and what we could see go up against Granada in this quarterfinal match for the Copa del Rey and here is going to be my starting 11 I do expect to see Neto in goal our defensive line is going to be Jordi Alba as the left back Samuel Umtiti and Ronald Araujo as the center back duo and I do expect Sergi Roberto to play as the right back again I do not expect Serginho Dest to start immediately, maybe come in later in that match. And then as for our midfield, I do expect to see Sergio Busquets within the pivot position and then have Pedri and Frankie De Jong function as the interiors right in front of Busquets. And then as for our front three, I do expect to see Dembele as the right winger, Messi as the center forward, and Antoine Griezmann as the left winger. I do believe that this is the strongest starting 11 Barcelona could display. And with a strong starting 11, we could get results and finish this game much, much earlier than expected. And if that's going to be the case, I do expect to see players such as Ricky Puj, Serginho Dest, Martin Brathwaite, and Trincao to come in later in this match. But that's going to be it for today's Barcelona pre-match preview. Let me know what's going to be your predicted starting 11 going up against Granada and what is your predicted score for this match. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new here, welcome to the channel. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.